Here, lions are a living nightmare. This is a hunting ground for lions that have decided to make their quarry human beings. In many parts of Tanzania, lions have undergone a disturbing change in behavior that has caused a fourfold increase in lion attacks on humans. Once a lion discovers that it can kill people, it's going to continue killing people until it's killed. Since 1990, over 600 people have been eaten by lions. There's a general fear among these communities that uh, these lions may strike anywhere and at any point in time. So what we're seeing here is really different than most of what you hear from anywhere else in Africa. We're talking about lions that get on a roof and dig people out. We're talking about lions that dig through a wall. We're not talking about just a regular old lion out there in the plains. Are lions now turning into serial killers? What has happened in Tanzania to upset the balance and spark such a violent increase in human bloodshed? Tanzania, East Africa, the epicenter of an ongoing crisis, a country where lions are switching their sights to focus on humans as fair game. On April the 10th, 2008, Musafizi Shabami, a young builder, was cycling with an older friend called Muna. They were near home, but so too was a 140 kilogram male lion running at full speed. The lion, it just came out from behind us and started chasing us. Within seconds, the lion was in striking distance of the cyclist. I was very scared. I was trembling so much I thought I was going to faint. He was chasing us and roaring. And that's when my friend fell off his bike. The lion leapt on Muna's back and dragged him to the edge of the highway. Standing on the roadside, Musafizi witnessed Muna being mauled by the lion. At this point I ran. I felt like I'd lost my mind. Kimu is the wife of the deceased. She faces a tough future, supporting a family of six children. For me, he just said goodbye going to work. I couldn't believe it at all. We were sharing and contributing, but now I'm struggling on my own. Kimu's husband is just one of over 900 victims of lion attacks in Tanzania since 1990. The situation is desperate. Thousands of rural Tanzanians have left their villages abandoned, terrorized, not by single rogue lions, but by prides of lions, hunting as a team to stalk and kill humans. We're not talking about just regular old lions. We're talking about lions that walk into a village and kill people. We're talking about lions that get on a roof and dig people out. We're talking about lions that dig through a wall. We're not talking about just a regular old lion out there in the plains. The cause of this bizarre behavioral change is a mystery, particularly as these outbreaks of man-eating lion attacks are not isolated to one region of Tanzania. They've occurred throughout the country, from Lindi in the south to Rifiji, and now further north in the district of Singida, where 20 people have been killed by lions in the past 12 months.
so critical is the situation. The Tanzanian government has called in the services of a big cat specialist from the United States named Darren Simpson. Simpson is a lion conservationist and tracker with a wealth of experience in human lion conflicts. Because lions are a protected species, he will be working with a team of government rangers to track down and kill the man-eating lions that are terrorizing the region. This is not the first time Simpson has hunted lions in Tanzania. I've been here uh, twice before. Uh, they've had everything from people being jerked down, uh, two male lions jerked down, two young men at, right in front of a police station one night, killed them right in front of the policeman. Uh, the lions were shot, went off and died, but so did the two young men. So as much as I love these big cats, and you're talking to a guy that's dedicated his life to capturing these animals for conservation. This is what I do. This is something that has to be dealt with. This is their reality, and so I'm here to help them deal with it. Working alongside Simpson is a team of six rangers, heavily armed with semi-automatics and shotguns, led by Wildlife Division official Dennis Ikanda, seen here in the camouflaged jacket. Ikanda is a human lion conflict specialist and a veteran lion tracker. The week before Simpson's arrival, his team shot and killed one of the target animals, but two man-eating lions remain at large. Although we have experienced uh, some level of success by killing one of the man-eaters, uh, but we still have two more to go. And uh, worst of all, we have a male lion on the loose, and they usually become a lot worse when they are partners. Are, are killed. Simpson and Ikanda receive a tip-off from a local herdsman. The lions have been spotted leaving the half-eaten corpse of a donkey. The hunters will use this dead donkey to lure the lions into foot snares. Since lions are notoriously possessive of their kills, it's possible they'll return tonight for another meal and step right into Simpson's traps. Should a lion place a paw on one of these cushions, the pressure will fire a trigger, tightening a noose of wire around the lion's leg. This snare has been designed to anchor a 200 kilo male lion to the ground. Lions have strong instincts to protect their kill. The hunters remain prepared. At any moment, the two man-eating lions that have been terrorizing the Singida region could attack them in a bid to reclaim their kill. These lions have already proven that they are not afraid to ambush human beings. They have adapted to attacking and eating human beings, so they actively seek human beings as prey, and they do it very well. They have studied the environment, they have studied the community, and they pretty much, I would say, know there's a hunting team uh, pursuing them. We want to make them go straight through here. Okay, we're going. Yeah. The hunters are as vulnerable to attack from Singida's man-eaters as anyone else in the region. Their only protection is the dying daylight. Once the sun goes down, the balance of power will shift to favor the lions, and the team will be open to an ambush from Africa's largest predator. <laughs> Lions can grow up to three meters long, and males can weigh over 200 kilograms. Their speed, strength, weaponry, and cunning make them one of the animal kingdom's most formidable terrestrial predators. But in Tanzania, 
Prides of lions are adding humans to their diet of zebra, impala, and wildebeest. A radical and a disturbing change in lion behavior. In the Singida region, one pride of man-eaters is going to extraordinary lengths to catch its new prey. They've learned there are easy targets along the main highway, the last place you'd expect to see lions. In the past year alone, at least 20 people have been killed by lions on or near this roadside. This road is now known as the Highway of Death. It's a paved two-lane road, main artery, through little tiny communities full of dwellings, an area where children walk to school every day. It's basically the village sidewalk. Women carrying loads on their heads to supply their home, groceries, water. Pretty benign area, you would think. This is a hunting ground for lions that have decided to make their quarry human beings. They're using the bush areas that are alongside the road as an ambush area. What, in essence, that we're into here is a human wildlife conflict and it feels like a war zone. This is extreme aggression by these animals. Less than a mile from the highway, with the light fading, the team finally finishes setting its lion traps. Yeah. Okay, that's gotta do. It's gonna have to do. Just before leaving, Simpson makes hyena calls, hoping to trick the lions into defending their kill from scavenging hyenas. Now the team must wait until dawn to see if they can catch a man-eating lion. Tanzania is home to more than one-third of the world's lion population. Over the millennia, these super predators have lived on the plains, honing their deadly hunting skills. But in Tanzania, lions are switching their sights to hunting humans. In a radical change to their natural behavior, whole prides of hungry lions are now stalking humans in search of an easy meal. One thing we're seeing here is lions that are bold enough to walk straight into villages and take people from right near their homes when there might be a number of people right near them. And this is not, this is not a normal behavior. This is not something that, that normal lions will do. This is an indication that these lions have learned that people are prey and they're actually preying on humans like they'd prey on any other animals. Hadas Kushnia, a human lion conflict expert, has been researching man-eating lions for four years. Her studies suggest a startling change in lion behavior. Adult lions may now be teaching their young techniques and tactics for hunting humans. There's a common misconception that most of the lions that, that cause these attacks are old or sick, and that's actually not something that we found to be true here in southern Tanzania. Um, sometimes we find young lions, healthy lions, taking part in it. So we think that they are teaching their young. And once they view us as a, any prey type, they're gonna you know, eat us just like they'd eat a gazelle. Kushnir is working in the Rafiji region to determine the reasons behind the dramatic increase in man-eating attacks here. She's learning that the lions of this area are continually adapting their methods to increase their proficiency at hunting humans. You can't underestimate the intelligence of these animals when it comes to hunting prey. They study their prey. They learn their prey's movements and their prey's behavior, and they'll, they'll adapt to how their prey is changing. This was particularly evident along the banks of the Rafiji River, used by the farming community in their daily routines. 
the way the villages in Rafiji are, are set up in this one area is that villages are on the north side of the river and agricultural fields are to the south. When the outbreak in 2002 started, early on most of the attacks were on the other side of the river, on the south side, than they were at night. But people started getting fearful. They started coming home earlier in the day and the attacks started happening earlier in the day. And eventually, people stopped going to their agricultural fields altogether, moved back to the villages, and the lion actually swam across the river and started preying on people on the north side of the river. So they, they're able to adapt, they're able to learn. Um, and it's, it's terrifying, because it's not just a chance event that you might get caught by a lion. There's a lion out there stalking you, actually looking, looking for you to eat. In the Rafiji River region of southern Tanzania, the locals blamed the deaths of 40 people on a single serial killing lion they named Osama, after the world's most wanted terrorist. But Kushnir believes that groups of lions are responsible for the bloodshed. Generally, it's going to be a small group of individuals. There'll be males and females. But what happens towards the end of an outbreak is um, through the hunting of lions, they've killed all the other lions. At the end, there's one man standing. The cases we know of, a lot of times it tends to be one male lion. The male lion might be injured already and towards the end can wreak a lot of havoc. Osama was eventually killed by a team of government hunters in April 2004. A sign on the outskirts of Kilimani village marks the spot where the lion's corpse is buried. Abdullah Chembele is a victim of the outbreak of man-eating that has plagued the Rafiji region. During the night in March 2003, a lion, possibly Osama, broke through a wall in his family's house, dragged his mother out into a nearby field and ate her. When I went home, I found the door was wide open and there was no one. When I went looking, I could see there were some marks on the ground, like someone's elbow. When I investigated further, I found her clothes and then blood. The horror of living in the presence of man-eaters is so bad, many locals refuse to believe normal lions are the cause of the bloodshed. Instead, they imagine these killings are the work of spirit lions, supernatural demons summoned up by enemy bush doctors and sent to destroy their foes. These lions can just knock down the door and get in and take you out. Someone sent them to come here and kill people. These are no ordinary lions. Hadas Kushnir knows about the traditional belief in spirit lions. She presumes that these supernatural explanations help people to deal psychologically with the horror of the situation. I look at them as coping mechanisms. If I had to live in a place where there were lions all the time, you know, the only way you could sort of settle that with yourself and feel better is to convince yourself that a normal lion is not the, the risk. The risk is actually some sort of spirit lion. And so a lot of people have the belief that spirit lions are sent to kill specific people. Normal lions don't kill. Um, and that's one of the ways I think they deal with living with the fear of lions is if you believe that a normal lion won't hurt you and it has to be a lion specifically sent to kill you, it's sort of much easier to go about your, your daily life. But for Darren Simpson, the explanation for man-eating lion attacks does not lie in the supernatural. The culprits are real lions, pure and simple. They are what they are. They're a lion. They're a force you have to deal with when you live around them. They're not evil. They're not spirit lions. They're not things that are sent to avenge the, 
the uh, sins of others. It, they're, they're simply a very incredible, formidable animal. That's what they are, and they are a wonder. But unfortunately, in this sort of scenario here, they, they just can't coexist with people when they begin to eat them on a regular basis. The hunt for two man-eating lions that have been terrorizing the Singida region of Tanzania continues. The tracking team are revisiting the traps they set the previous night around the carcass of a donkey recently killed by these lions. The sound of a big cat up ahead in the bush seems to suggest their efforts have been rewarded. Leopard? No lion? No lion, nobody. Big male. The Tanzanian government has ordered the hunters to shoot and kill any potential man-eater captured in the vicinity. We're going to kill him, I guess. <laughs> One of the disadvantages of foot snare traps is the possibility of capturing non-target carnivores. But leopards have been known to kill humans, and releasing a large predator at this sensitive time is unthinkable. You don't have option B, you know, you have to do this. It's not like we can sit down and interview them when 15 people have been killed. You know, we have to put human welfare here first. As much as people would like to think there's a possible alternative, they're not living here. They're not having their kids get killed and their mother get killed and their father get dug out of a house by a large predator. So leopards are culprits in this area as well, and they're on the list. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. The lion hunters are not giving up there's enough donkey carcass left to set up another trap. Simpson lays his foot snares once more in the hope that tonight he'll have better luck and will succeed at catching the man-eaters. One explanation for the surge in human-lion conflict in Tanzania is that the natural prey of lions, like impala, zebra and kudu, has become severely depleted due to poaching and increased habitat destruction. Lions simply have no choice but to go in search of alternative prey. As lions seek out new habitat, obviously they want to go into habitat that doesn't have the presence of other dominant lions and they want to have the uh, presence of prey. When there is no prey and the prey is hunted out, you have substitute prey, like what's behind me right here. Livestock become the first conflict. As a consequence of preying on livestock, lions inevitably come into contact with people and discover they too are easy targets. Human beings are like little pink balloons to these very formidable predators. Herds like this usually will mean that there are herders. Then if people present themselves time after time after time, as you see here, where you have small children walking to school in lion habitat, you have women going to this watering hole every day to gather water with small children all by themselves, a smart creature like a lion begins to figure out the easy opportunity. In the Rafiji region, Hadas Kushnir attempts to find further explanations as to why the rate of man-eating lion fatalities has quadrupled since 1990. She's discovered a pattern in the statistics that leads her to believe sure. it's the people's methods of agriculture that make them vulnerable to attack. 
One of the places where people are most at risk is in their agricultural fields. Generally, the agricultural fields are pretty far from the village. They're isolated from each other, and there's a lot of bush surrounding it. So right there, you're at risk. One of the really important factors that we're finding are bush pigs as crop pests. Bush pigs are nocturnal crop pests, so they only come at night. Um, and in order to protect your crops, you have to sleep at night in your agricultural fields and sometimes leave your hut in pitch darkness and make noise and try to scare these bush pigs away. Because there's not a lot of prey in the area, bush pigs are a really important prey source for lions in these districts. And so lions know where to find the bush pigs, and the bush pigs are found where the people are found. And so oftentimes you'll get sort of a collision between people and lions with bush pigs as, as the link. It was while defending their crops against marauding bush pigs that Asifwa Mbwata's family was devastated by a lion attack. In the middle of the night, his father, mother, and two nephews were dragged out of their shelter and eaten. The exact picture of what happened. The lion, he took my mother first and ate her there, up to the waist, and killed my father and put him aside and took the children. He arranged them almost next to each other so that when my brother went to look for them there, he saw the children first and thought they were sleeping. But they had already gone. Despite this tragedy, Asifoy and his remaining relatives continue to sleep in the fields, guarding their crops from bush pigs. He says they have no choice. If we don't sleep in the fields, then all the labor we engage in will be for nothing, because our food will be eaten by animals like pigs or monkeys. That's why people sleep in the fields, so that they can have something to eat. We know that the lion kills, but if you are spared, your children will get to eat. Many villagers sleep in temporary makeshift shelters called dungus that provide little protection against lions. Because the Rufiji villagers have no option but to be out in the fields at night, Kushner is trying to encourage them to be more proactive in defending themselves against attacking lions. What this family has done, which is really great, they've built a dungu that's reinforced and closed on the bottom. This here is quite strong. And over here, they actually have bamboo poles. And what's really wonderful is that this is the area here, which would normally be open, and the family would normally be, be cooking here at night, um, resting here at night. And what they've done is close it off so that if a lion is roaming, the lion won't be able to see them or get to them very easily. Unfortunately, not all houses are like this. There's a lot of makeshift huts out there that are constructed much more flimsy, lower to the ground, um, a lot of more sort of straw and palm, where lions can literally just jump in and take people from inside or even knock the structure down. The villages of the Rufiji region are learning to live with the man-eaters. But up in Singida, man-eating lions are a new menace. The local people are panicking, and their hopes lie with the government team. The hunters return to the baited traps and find they failed to catch their target. I'm gonna let him go, you guys. Okay, watch out now. I need everybody to stand over there. Yesterday, they caught and killed a leopard. Now they face an enraged hyena. Although this animal is capable of inflicting a lethal bite, it doesn't pose a threat to the local community. The hunters will attempt to release the animal. Sometimes 
Simpson takes great pains to ensure this female spotted hyena doesn't sustain any injuries. It will return to the wild unharmed. Loose, loose, everybody back. <laughs> it's real common to catch spotted hyenas when you're using baited sets like this. If you go over there and you look at what's left of that carcass um, and the bone chips, shank bones, cannon bones, all those sort of things, they eat them like candy bar. That's how much jaw strength they have. So when they bite you, it's very serious. And they lock up like a bulldog. And so, uh, yeah, that's what you gotta be careful of. Having failed to catch the lions with the donkey carcass, the hunters are now employing a new strategy. That's it, baby. Talk it up. Live bait. The team has come to a watering hole where they know the lions regularly come to drink. Come on. Okay. The plan is to put two goats in a protective cage to prevent them from being harmed and lay snares all around its perimeter. The hope is that the lions will be drawn to the commotion of bleating goats and walk straight into Simpson's trap. Leave no stone unturned, no <laughs> holds barred, and you throw as much at them as you can. So this is a little unconventional, and hopefully this will work. These are desperate measures. But will the hunters finally manage to catch the man-eating lions believed to be responsible for killing 20 people in the past year? I really want this lion bad. I want him because what he's doing for all parties concerned. I want him because he's starting to get real cagey on us. And it's a challenge. We'll admit that. I love catching animals that are really difficult to catch. I take great pride in that. But to catch this guy would be real special because it's going to mean a lot to a lot of people. Tanzania is home to one-third of the world's rapidly diminishing lion population. It's estimated there may be fewer than 15,000 lions left in its national parks and unprotected areas. Throughout Africa, these majestic cats are vulnerable to the loss of their prey, the threat of encroaching agriculture, and the retaliation of humans for the death of their livestock. the government faces a no-win situation. On the one hand, they want to conserve these animals because they are a multi-million dollar source of revenue from tourism and organized hunting. On the other, by encouraging their conservation, Tanzanians are made more prone to attack. Part of the reason that we're experiencing an increase in these number of attacks is the positive outcome of lion conservation in Tanzania. Numbers seem to have increased and excess individuals from core populations are now spilling into buffer zones that extend into village areas and then human lion encounters have increased over the years. In southern Tanzania, the Salu Game Reserve is the second largest protected region in Africa, covering an area of 50,000 square kilometers. It's one of the most important strongholds of game animals in the country, and consequently, a hotspot for lions. There may be as many as 4,500 lions living in the reserve. Biologist Henry Brink monitors the Salu lion population by using radio collars to track the size and extent of their range.
Currently we follow some 114 different individuals um, covering some 800 square kilometers which is sort of um, 14 lines per 100 square kilometers which is very good line density. In the eyes of conservationists, the Salu lions are a success story, but there's a problem. The human population is increasing, um, and it's coming closer and closer to the boundary of Salu. This is Salu boundary in large parts of it is just boundary markers. Uh, what's a marker to a lion? It goes where it wants. The lions of this park don't recognize park boundaries and are prone to leave its perimeter in search of prey. When this happens, they inevitably come into contact with people. Just recently, there was a, on the 11th of June, a lion attacked a person just 500 meters or so from the Slu boundary in a sort of small open hut. It was like a nightmare. That's the way the, the people there described it. In that area, there's no power, everything's dark, you go to sleep early, and then suddenly in the middle of the night, they're, they're attacked. It was very much like a nightmare. But perhaps these attacks are not as unpredictable as once thought. One of the behavior patterns observed by scientists such as Brink is that lion attacks on humans increase during the rainy season. There is food here, there's enough food, but what happens is um, during the rainy season, all the prey disperses from around water holes and, and so on, and the lions have a much, much difficult time finding the food, and therefore they also disperse and start looking for, for food, and it's during the rainy season where you get this sort of spike in lion eating because the lions are in some cases, leaving the park and so on. The suggestion that changes in the weather can trigger man-eating outbreaks is supported by other research. After four years of studying man-eating across Tanzania, Hadass Kushnir is also convinced that rainfall patterns are a central factor in the recent rise of man-eating prides. When rainfall increases, man-eating increases, and the effect can be felt right across the country. It seems like too much of a coincidence that you have three outbreaks happening starting in the same year. There was one here in Rafiji, and two in Lindi with two separate groups of lions. So the scale is pretty enormous. Here in Rafiji, um, the numbers we have are about 52 people being killed. But down in, in Lindi, the numbers are much higher, upwards of you know 85 or 90 during that two, three years time period. Kushnir's theory is that the ultimate cause of these simultaneous man-eating outbreaks could lie well beyond the shores of Tanzania. There's a large number of attacks in 1999, and we have anecdotal evidence that um, there was a lot of flooding that year. There was a El Nino in 97, 98 that caused a lot of flooding in the region. The wildlife patterns were different than usual, um, and that's why the attacks were higher. El Nino is a worldwide weather phenomenon that results in supersized flooding across East Africa. The floods force the game animals to seek higher ground, with the result that some prides of lions find themselves marooned with a limited supply of food. It's at this point that they are forced to go in search of human prey. From what people told us, it sounded like if you get a lot of rain, you have animals in places where you wouldn't normally have animals, or you're missing animals in areas where you would normally have animals. So potentially the, the lion prey wasn't where the lions were. And so lions were then more desperate, more hungry, and turned towards people. Many scientists predict that global warming will likely increase the severity and frequency of flooding events. If the connection between flooding and the rise in outbreaks of man-eating lion attacks is proven to be true, the future looks bleak. A future that will undoubtedly see an increase in human-lion conflict.
the hunt continues for the man-eating lions of the Singida region of Tanzania, where at least 20 people have been killed in the past year on or near the highway. The pressure mounts for the hunters to get results before more lives are lost to the lions. Simpson and the hunters have returned to inspect their traps, and once again their efforts have been foiled. They've snared a second leopard and have no option but to kill it. Once a lion as well as other carnivores begin uh, eating humans, they will not uh, stop. And in fact, this has led to Tanzania's wildlife policy that any large carnivore that attacks a human being, the only solution is to eradicate it. As you see, it's a beautiful animal, uh, young, still young, and it's prime age, but uh, it's a problem, I mean, it's a human, wildlife conflict uh, issue. This is the stark reality of 21st century Africa, where conflict between people and large predators is rapidly increasing. Those on the front line of the human-lion conflict believe that the best short-term solution is to continue deploying hunter forces to target these animals aggressively. Without expert teams like this, local communities will deal with the killers in their own way, a path that ends in disaster for all the wildlife. What you will cause is people to take it into their own hands and begin poison campaigns. And I'm here to tell you, I've been all over this continent and I've seen the results of poison campaigns and it's ugly. And you will not just lose one or two problem lions, you'll lose all the lions. And that's what we're trying to actively prevent. Rural Africans face many challenges. When confronted with a new foe, a man-eating pride, many people here feel they have no option but to retaliate. And they do so with devastating effect. One of the most poignant stories to come out of this conflict is that of a herder whose wife was eaten by a lion. An individual who lost his wife decided to help the community out of desperation by lacing the remains of his wife's body after she was attacked by these man-eaters with uh, rat poison. And the lion came and took the, the body and after two days it was uh, found uh, dead. It's a graphic example of the lengths people will go to to eliminate lions. This conflict is devastating for both humans and lions. Lions once roamed the whole of Africa, but human retaliation against the man-eaters, the increase in agriculture, hunting, and the loss of natural prey have steadily eliminated the continent's lion population. In the last 30 years, Africa's lion population has almost halved from 75,000 to less than 40,000. It's very much not good for lions. Um, when there's an outbreak, often they'll kill all the lions in the area indiscriminately. Um, any lion they see will be killed, even if a lion's not responsible for the attack. Um, and what eventually could happen is that lion populations are limited only to protected areas. And in most cases, protected areas aren't large enough to sustain viable populations for generations to come. So it's definitely a risk. And it's a risk for carnivores around the world. Retaliation because of conflict is one of the major reasons for carnivore population decline in Africa, in, in Europe, in North America, everywhere. Lion biologist Henry Brink also considers a future where lions may only be found in protected areas, separated from human habitation. 
Tanzania has gone exactly the right way. It's set aside some 30% of its land in some sort of protected conservation status, um, which is an awful lot of land if you compare it to other, other areas. So I think in Tanzania, for example, you will have a healthy lion population in the future. Whether they'll exist outside the sort of protected areas, let's say in 50 years' time, that's another matter. It's very difficult for large carnivores and humans to coexist. Darren Simpson, who continues on the hunt for the man-eaters of Singida, is pragmatic when questioned on whether humans and lions can coexist. Humans, he says, will always prevail. Animals always lose. Unfortunately, they're the ones that have to give. These cats no longer have a place in this particular ecosystem, and they have to be removed. That's reality. And as you remove habitat and you have more people, you're going to have more conflict. Out in this area where we are, we happen to have predators that are extremely formidable, and yet they aren't solitary. They run in prides. Unfortunately, outside conducive habitat, in an urban area, there is no conservation benefit to apex predators that are hunting regularly human beings. In the month after the film crew left Tanzania, two more people were killed by lions along the road the locals have named the Highway of Death. But finally, there's been a breakthrough. The male lion that had led a pride to kill at least 20 people in less than a year was caught in a pillaged trap. A victory for the hunters that had spent the best part of three months tracking down the man-eating lions of the Singida region. But there's still one lion at large, and the war, with no foreseeable end, continues.